Hey boys and girls, uh, we're here at Lightship. Uh, this is the latest and greatest in the, um, in the world of um, RVing. And I'm, I'm here with uh, Ben Parker, no relationship to Spider-Man's uncle. But at the end of the day, um, Ben's gonna give us a little tour and a little talk on this, on this new, very exciting uh, way of uh, putting out an RV. Um, I've seen pictures and little videos and whatnot. Actually, I don't think they're videos. I think they were like uh, CAD illustrations or something. Where no, they they're, real. they're real. Were they real? Videos. Yeah. They looked really good. Yeah, Anyhow, we're going to find out a lot more about this. So uh, first off, Ben, why don't you give us a little bit of background on you and then we'll have a look at your vehicle. Cool. Let's do it. Well, hey, Sandy. Hey, uh, Monroe family. I'm Ben Parker. No, like you said, no, no relation to the the great man's uncle. Although with great power comes great responsibility, yeah, as we yeah. know. Uh, we are we are Lightship. We are the first American electric RV manufacturer, and um, this is our first product. We call it the L1. It's the it's the perfect travel trailer for the age of electrification. It's a ground up design, so we are uh, you know from scratch vehicle manufacturer yeah. and uh, designing for all the you know all all the kind of the new opportunities of, of electrification mm. and and new constraints like like battery energy density. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can take you through the whole the whole vehicle if you if you'd like. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Uh, okay, so um, I'm assuming yeah, yeah. this is a door, and uh, this must be the entrance. So. That is a door. You want? Do you yeah. want to do inside first, and then Why outside? Why not? Or? Yeah. Inside out is a All good right. idea. Inside out. We actually did. So we we engineered and designed it from the outside in. Uh, well, that's usually so. the way the uh, styling guys do it. Yeah. The outside in is usually the the, the best way to get the look. Any arrow, but exactly. once you get inside, now you got all the real work because right. now I got to figure out how to fit this. And one of the things we should say is, this is in the up position yeah. for us walking through. However, this goes down, right? Which yeah. I think is fabulous from an arrow standpoint. Good, we agree. Yeah, the only way to to reduce the frontal area is to have it transform like that. Right. So this is we call this the camping mode. It's about about 10 feet tall, total vehicle height, um, and you get a you get a really tall tall ceiling on the inside. So it's yeah. it's kind of it's close to a residential experience as opposed to a lot of campers. You're you're really uh, pen, penned in. Yeah, yeah. Um, it also, if you want to come over here, Eric, it the vehicle will go into a a road mode as well. We call it so. In the road mode, the the entire top of the vehicle, which we call the canopy, the bottom is the tub. The canopy collapses down on the tub. And so the the total height of the vehicle when in road mode is about the same height as the as the truck that's towing it, and that means you know it's it's great from an aerodynamics standpoint, yeah. better CD and, and lower lower frontal area. Um, it's a th this was kind of the the starting point for the whole the whole effort of of making this product was aerodynamics engineering um, mm -hmm. because we knew we knew our our goal was to get to a zero range loss experience, which especially for an EV truck is, is really important because yeah. as you guys know, you've, you've done some testing, a, an EV truck pulling a traditional travel trailer loses about two thirds of its range. Right. And so, you know, a 300 mile truck becomes a hundred mile truck, maybe at that rate, yeah. which, which you really can't do a, a true road trip with. Right. And so the, way, so the way that we get back that, that 200 miles lost is first by designing for for efficiency, great you know great passive efficiency. Um, we were able to get to a to a form that is about um, it's about three times as aerodynamic as the next the next mm -hmm. best travel trailer, and it's really that that telescoping right. action plus the shape of the vehicle yeah. that that got us there. So now, uh, if you're three times more aerodynamic, now you go from 100 miles of range to 200 miles of range. And then we still wanted to make up that extra hundred miles to get back to, to zero range loss and and you know keep your your three hundred mile truck a, a three hundred mile truck and the way that we did that once we'd done the passive efficiency was to put an EV battery and a motor on board which we can actually we can peek at underneath um, it's about the the battery is a you know high voltage automotive battery it's about the same size as would go into a Model Three or any yeah, any any yeah. passenger car so about seventy kilowatt hours. Yeah, uh, 80, about 80, about, about oh, 80, 80 usable. Yeah. You want to have a little bit of extra so that when you get to right. the, the campground, you're able to, to you know, to run yeah, all your right. appliances yeah. in, inside yeah. the, the camper. Um, and so now with the combination of that EV battery plus a drive unit, which we put on board, 
the drive unit can propel the rear wheels of the trailer. And that means that the trailer is helping itself or it's pushing itself. And so the truck feels almost nothing as it's going down the road as you're, as you're cruising yeah. on the highway. And when it feels nothing, it also loses no, no range. Um, cool. So that, that's, that's kind of uh, the comprehensive approach that we took to get to uh, what we think is a great, great trailer for, for the electric mm -hmm. cage. Uh, so one thing I'd like to... Cool too. One thing I'd like to do, this looks like a Rivian. Yeah. And so when you look at a, a flow a flow model, if I put this into a wind tunnel, you'd see the uh, wind coming over the top yeah. and it, it goes up and then it swoops down and it's gonna go out here. Yep. With a conventional RV, this goes down and now I've got this big ball of turbulence. Huge turbulence. And it's on. the exact opposite to drafting. Um, you get you get a gigantic amount of drag. So having this swoop down, and I can see I can in my mind's eye, anyways, yep. I can see the the uh, and you, the turbulence that you're going to get is out here, and it doesn't you don't care about that. It doesn't suck you backwards. You're so exactly right. The, be... the key so the kind of the two main objectives in the aero work was we know we have this turbulent onset flow coming yeah. off of the the rear of the truck. And so we need to reattach the flow as, right. as efficiently as possible. And that's, we did a lot of tuning on the, the tongue box shape here to yeah. fill the void between the, the trailer and the truck. Yeah. And then also this angle here, in fact, all, all the angles, you, you know, on the right. nose of the vehicle, all of them are, are optimized to grab the air and reattach it to the body. And then the, the body is as all smooth contours all the way down. So it keeps the flow attached doesn't allow the boundary layer to, to grow right. too thick. So, yeah. so there's no, almost no separation down the whole 27 foot length. And then at the rear, you can see we boat tail it. So you taper, taper yeah. the tail in and in doing so minimize the wake. And then you want a clean cut at the rear exactly. so the air separates cleanly. Yeah. And the, the end result here is a 27 foot, eight and a half feet wide vehicle that is as drag efficient as a Model 3 which we're cool. pretty proud of. The one thing I do like as well is that when you look at this, and again, mind's eye kind of stuff, <clears throat> this looks like a lifting body on an airplane. Mm -hmm. So uh, you may also get something where it's not gonna lift it off the ground, but it, it's not gonna let it drag down either because whatever I've got under here is gonna go under there. So that is my straight line. This is my curve line to give a little bit of lift. I think I think you guys got a real giant winner here. I like Thanks. I like Thanks. everything about it. Appreciate let's that. Let's go and have a look inside. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so then, of course, once you get to the the campground, there's this this kind of presentational moment when you you lift yeah. lift the whole trailer. Oh yeah, here we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is a this is just off of Skyline and uh, Skyline Drive in the Bay Area, it's look, looking out to the Pacific Ocean. So we'll see. So yeah, anyways, so yeah, you let's... get so you get to the campsite, you uh, you lift lift the vehicle up, put it into its camping mode. You you can see. Um, right now, the, at least the, the design in this, this is a pre-production prototype that we're looking at, but it is, it is functional. Um, you can see we've got a ball screw in there, oh, yeah. ball screw mechanism on the, on the corners. Um, this is how, this is how the, the entire canopy is, yeah. is lifted at the corners, is synchronized ball screws. Um, and yeah, so now, so now you, 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 can, uh, you can go in and, and enjoy, your, enjoy your camper at the campsite. Cool. Step right up. Yeah. And uh, you can play back rack. Yes. Yeah, or so put blocks to together, whatever you want. <laughs> or bad, bad gamut, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this back rack. Um, wow, this is. That's, yeah, there's the, to give it the sandy test. Yeah. yeah I, can, is... I, can just, I can just reach the ceiling, but it's, a, it's a, almost a residential ceiling. This is actually what, this is, um, you know, it's one of, the, one of the, the benefits that you get from having it have those two modes is that you can yeah. be very slipstreamed when you are driving, but then you have this huge spacious experience once you get inside. Um, another, another thing that I think is, is gonna become our, our hallmark is the, um, the number of transparent surfaces. Yeah, I was upper. just gonna say, so this many is windows. spectacular for the, for the windows. Yeah, so of course we're we're in a we're in a in a parking lot with a bunch of cool EVs right now. But you can imagine as as you get to a, a beautiful campsite, yeah. any yeah. any any beautiful natural area, um, it's you you take in the vistas here. That yeah. kind of the one of the core ideas was how do we bring the outside in so that you can be comfortable and, and enjoying yourself in inside of the, the well, travel trailer, this. but yeah. but still be visually connected to the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
we want to go we can go front to back if if you'd like so yeah let's see uh generally i think what you'll find and i hope you guys are already finding this in the vehicle is that it's the layout is, is really good for circulation so we, we've had uh we had a, at one point when our, our company was uh, 25 people, we had all 25 people in here. Wouldn't recommend that. That's that's a that's, little tight. Yeah. That's tight, but uh, but it can be done. But for for a few people like this, imagine you know a small family and maybe a guest or two. It's really easy to move throughout mm. the space. And mm. the key thing is that I, a lot of the RVing that I and and you know many of us at Lightship have done, you. you Many layouts, there are bottlenecks in, in, in the layout. So people are sort of crawling over each other. Like you can't get to the bathroom because someone is in the kitchen. For yeah. instance, I've had that happen all the time. And so we, we really focused um, on relieving those bottlenecks and, and, and making uh, movement easy to do within the vehicle. So I'm looking, um, I can see maybe how this could turn onto a bed. Yep. How many people can you sleep in here? Four to six, depending on the configuration. Four to six? Yeah, yeah. It's a, um, this would be four. So you have a, you know, this is kind of your main, your main bed, your, your queen bed. And there's a, you know, it's like a day bed. So oh, I see. Pops yeah. out like that to, to increase the foot. And then there's also a, um, th so this is a dinette by day. But yeah. if you've got some kids, for instance, you could stash those two kids on the, the, the dinette bed as well. Um, so this table should, should telescope down. Let's see if it's turned on. Oh, I think it might not be. Oh, no, it looks is. like it drops down, eh? Yeah, exactly. It's it, you imagine it's a little bit like standing desk, where the, yeah. the, whole, the whole thing yeah. will telescope down. Um, and then you put the mats on top of there. Yep. Yep. Sleeping mat down, so that becomes your your second sleeping surface. Um, mm. So main bed space, dinette or dining space, or second bed space. Back up. Um, and then just just broad strokes moving back through the vehicle, you have a storage area, a storage console all along the, the oh, left side of the vehicle. you've got a lot of stuff vehicle. in here, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you've got, that's wheel well underneath, but there's a whole whole bunch of four, four, of, these, four of these compartments. So that, I think people will put odds and ends and pray clothing in particular. You imagine yeah. you come with a duffel and you, you right. throw, your, throw yeah. your duffel in here. Um, and so we got got a bunch bunch of those. Same, same deal here. Um, you can, uh, I don't know if you want to, you can fill the dinette if you want. What's that? You can just hop, hop in and feel, feel how the space feels. It's pretty, we think it's pretty well, comfy. Uh, um, one, feels, one thing, there are a lot of little details in here, but we, we have a, um, a really, really good design team. Um, uh, thing of one, one person, Jessica, who's our, our color material and finish designer. She, she's a background in automotive industrial design. She, yeah. was, she was with Neo for a while, um, but she also did plane design and so you can you can feel yeah, this looks more aircraft than it does automotive yeah exactly. um, i like the uh, um usually if you get a transition from something like um you know this uh, uh pinky sort of stuff mm -hmm. yeah they and call it a 3d down, knit 3d yeah, knit fabric 3d knit fabrics are are um, uh, a little bit more expensive however mm -hmm. um they just uh, they kick the daylights out of uh, out of the style i mean yeah i i really like the way this came down and you can see that it's blending into uh, mostly pink with some uh, uh, turquoise yeah. or coral, whatever. Yeah. And then and then into the blue. And the blue is better because um, having this here would be an issue. It Bl uh, blends into the floor hurry. color as well, yeah. you know, because the, the floor is this, this yeah, sort the of greenish light, color. light green. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, she, the, well, like everything the on the color amazing. wheel is kind of close to each other. So yeah. I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I like it when uh, when things don't clash. I am not a I, I I'm not a stylist by any stretch of the imagination, but Nor I, I uh, I'm kind of into um, uh, colors and blending and things like that. So this this has got enough different colors to keep it interesting, and they're close enough on the color wheel so that uh, they don't clash with each other. So yep. I'm pretty happy about that. Good. I'm, I uh, I love it too, and we're 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 working on a couple of different colorways too, so people have, have you know a, a bit yeah. of, bit of choice in here. Um, one thing, the little well, details let's... to it. I think you see this from 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 the, the the aircraft background is we're a lot of I think a lot of RVs that I've been in, you have really um, thick foam cushions, but but it's not yeah. necessarily that supportive. You sort but of fall not, into it. It's this actually a, they're not comfortable. The uh, boat push cushions or something like that. Yeah. Sometimes they get so thick. Uh, you get a that, dead leg. Exactly. Yeah. This uh, this seems to be fairly comfortable. Yeah, 
it's and it's comfortable enough. Is this like memory it's thin, foam? It's thin but supportive. Yeah, it's well, it's a it's a laminate. It's um, a thin layer of memory foam on top, and then uh, a medium density foam and a high density foam as the as the bottom, the backer. Um, cool. You, you feel that in the bed too. I've, yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've slept on that bed. And well, it's, that's it's actually, a, it's that's feel. your more expensive beds. So that's what they're using. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So let's have a peek over here let's at the uh, business Gander. end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah, so move, move so what, what am I looking at here? This would be a charging pad, wireless charging pad. So you, you, know, you drop oh, your device I see. Oh, on there. Very good. Um, yeah, yeah. Great. yeah. Um, we're we're trying not to go crazy with the sort with the in-your-face technology because yeah. um, that kind of detracts from the camping experience we think the the main idea is how do we um, tone this down make it feel like a really warm kind of calm relaxing space and then yeah. use technology to um, to allow you to concentrate more yeah. on the camping experience it's sort yeah. of qu quiet technology is, is the idea yeah um, instead just, of exposed technology exposed yeah. technology was very very popular there uh, for a long time now it's kind of like moved in this direction here, so it's. Applied. I don't think it'll age well either. If if all the technology is in your face all the time, because it changes so much yeah. or so quickly, yeah. it'll it. Um, you gotta you gotta put it in the background so it doesn't feel dated immediately. Yeah. Well, that's what, kind of like what happens now is people are looking at uh, at some of the techniques and technology they had in those days. Yeah. As uh, being either old fashioned or, hey, how come they didn't you know make it more ergonomic or yeah. how come they, they didn't make it graceful so and then you've got a uh, sink so i assume that when the ceiling is down it's <laughs> not touching this not quite it's uh about really? an, an inch to spare <laughs> it was it was uh, a so does this come off then uh, yeah I pull think it so. off and put it in the sink yeah, yeah it's i mean it's typical typical kitchen yeah you know kitchen faucet um, yeah looks like uh um, but but nice stuff. old lady yeah. yeah yeah exactly um and then you got a cooler sink Oh, no, I don't. What is that? You know, wow. it's pretty funny. It's German. Kreuz. Kreuz. Um, Kreuz is the name. And it's pretty funny because my, my co-founder's name is Toby Kraus. He, he, ah. he, he led finance at, at Tesla for a few years. Yeah. Uh, and this was a complete coincidence that we found a Kreuz sink, <laughs> but it, it, it is an homage in a way. Yeah. Um, well, at to, the end of the day, this is a very nice sink. Stainless steel. Yep. Nicely welded up. Yeah. Um, Full, full kitchenette is the idea. You know, you'd have you'd have a, a, a fridge here, double double drawer wow. fridge. Oh man, they stocked this thing full. I gotta grab one of those after. Um, yeah, good idea. Yeah, you want one too? No. Go, grab one again. So full full double drawer fridge, a freezer as well. Oh wow! All right. So you got a little little freezer space there. There's some under sink storage. You know, goes around the P trap. Um, a microwave, of course. You see, we, we've been going with all the drawer style appliances. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This, this is all, by the way, every, every all the power you see in here is running off of the high voltage battery right now through, oh. and, and through it through an inverter. Um, so it's it's truly kind of clean, seamless, quiet power. That's yeah. that's what you get as opposed to generators and propane tanks and everything yeah. that people are yeah. used to with RVs today. We think it's 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 a you know it's almost a vacation home like experience. It's meant to be just ease of use, one button, turn your light ship yeah, on, right. and then never think about power again. And all the while, the whole rooftop of the vehicle is covered in solar. And so, you're, whenever you are in yeah. the sun, you are generating energy to keep you know keep up with your 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 camping use. Um, so, what's underneath the microwave? Oh More yeah, uh, this or? is the uh, the coup de gras. We hate doing dishes when we're out camping. So of I was course, wondering, we, yeah. we put a we put a dishwasher in there. Um, this the, the story behind this is cool though because you know mo unlike most campers we have the power to run this at yeah. any, anywhere you are and once you have that power it turns out that a dishwasher makes a lot of sense from a water use right standpoint. water use is uh, like one tenth yeah it's, uh, versus washing hand, versus hand sink. washing hand yeah. washing it all it all goes right. down the drain with this it's it's recycling the water yeah, and right. it's, it's much yeah. more economical and what really what that means is you can go camping longer off grid because you're you're preserving the water in your fresh who's tank. who's uh who's whose dishwasher is that this is a fisher and pakel unit <sighs> my favorite you like F&P? yeah nice. i our refrigerator is fish pakel and we're in the process of redoing uh, the stuff in our house, yeah. and everything's going to be Fisher Paykel. Good for you. We we have one of these in our office too, and it's um, yeah. th that was part of the inspiration. It's just a great unit. Yeah, um, it is. Qu yeah. Quiet again, economical. Yeah. So that had that had to go in. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Big Cook shout top. out to New Zealand. That's where Fisher Paykel is made. Oh, they okay. They're New Zealand. Yeah. I'm saying. So this, this is some of your yeah. The magnets are a little strong on this. We got to tune the magnets, but huh. um, this would be you know all of all of your 
kind of kitchen yeah. storage and pantry space. And we've got we've got a couple a couple drawers of that. So pots and pans. There's another another deep drawer beneath there. Um, that's all your kitchen stuff. Um, and then of course just a bunch of stories up top. And then uh, this will be this will be the trash as well. We're still installing the trash trash bin there. Mm -hmm. um, come into the bathroom. We we kind of asked ourselves at the outset of of designing this. What is luxury? And we think, in short, it is a spa-like bathroom experience and a high ceiling. And so we put both in. Uh, if I were to take a shower, Sandy, I would say bye-bye. Oh, very good. <laughs> well, I could look at you through the window. That's true. Well, I guess. I guess. A, yeah, I don't have privacy because of the yeah. glass. Okay. Well, I'll have to cover, cover that off. So yeah. Sandy can well, see me in the shower. At the end of the day, if you're out in the woods, no one's going to see you anyway. Yeah. Maybe a bear or something. This is a great. Um, Recycled plastic material. This is actually ocean, ocean recapture. Yeah. Um, if if you were just using this as a bathroom, of course you could you could pull up, add add some counter space for yourself, and then when it's time to shower, you drop that down. Rain shower, rain shower overhead. So yeah, you use the great. use the, the full height, um, and then some some storage space here. Th this too, you you can get. It feels like a very large plain bathroom right. um, in the sense yeah. that the, the ergonomics are really yeah. thought of down to the millimeter. Um, the whole the whole rear is a. a a, a mirror, right, which makes it feel even bigger. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll see if we can show you towards the end. Uh, you can actually lift this whole mirror out like a lift gate, basically, or a tailgate, I should say. Really? Yeah. So the whole thing comes up. We'll do. We'll do it. I'll do it at the end. Sure. It takes a little. Takes a little finagling. Great. Because it's a prototype. Um, yeah. Last thing you For can a see prototype, too. Prototype though. This is pretty magnificent. Yeah, we we I, didn't uh, want to make a pusher. We didn't want to make it just a show car that has no no functionality yeah. built in because we it's, it's a true alpha vehicle. It's it's not yet durable, um, but it has all the functional elements to, that you know make make the thing work. Yeah, you pull that and push yeah. open. Exactly. So that's cool. uh, that's most of the interior. We love wow. it. Um, maybe I can point a few more things out about about the so exterior. So how does this stow? Oh, it comes up. You want to come out here? I can show you. It's kind of a kind of a. Uh, we still need to put some seals in here, but it's traditional RV stair style, so it stows ah, away okay. like that, and then you know that closes up. And this this is a this this stows away with a, a, a grab handle that you can see up there. Oh yeah. That's kind of a hatch door style. We didn't we didn't do the full uh, Falcon Wing door with the you know the two the two joints one 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 hatch Marine style felt like yeah, enough yeah. to us. Um, you can see the wheel covers here. This is this is largely for aero again. Yeah. Um, this we haven't installed it yet, but this will be for a camp kitchen. So there's going to be a, a, a slide away camp kitchen, like a little bit like what the Rivian has. Um, yeah. It's they're really popular in RVs, so this will be something that'll pivot out, and you and I will be able to to, to cook over the camp kitchen like that. Yeah, that you could use it for a bar. Yeah. Most uh, yeah, most exactly. of the time, if uh, <clears throat> if I'm stopped like this, I'll just you know hey, gather up some wood, and you'd have a barbecue or something. So my uh, girlfriend and, and I here. have a uh, we have a dream to because the, so a lot of this story started as me having a pet project to electrify all the food trucks in the Bay Area. Oh yeah. I wanna mm -hmm. I wanna at some point get once we're you know fully in volume production and I can take a breath. My girlfriend and I want to do a long road trip of America and treat one of these like a food truck. We'll pop the window <laughs> open and she'll be serving cocktails. <laughs> and we'll do a little, little pop up. Right <laughs> there as we go. Oh, That'd good be, idea. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um, great. I think I think the other thing that you note that is uh, it's really unique to what we're doing is, is most RVs are not very styled. Um, they're kind of they're kind yeah. of just beige bricks, you know, that, that go yeah. down the road. And because our approach started with Aero, and because we are a team of automotive people, we wanted to take an automotive design approach too. So our, yeah. actually, our, our our designer, his name is Rob Williams. He was the chief creative officer at Rivian for a while. So, but he oh, yeah. worked on both the brand and and the product design as they were leading up to the LA auto show launch. Cool. And he brought, you know, that that same that same expertise to, to this to this effort. And so you just see a lot of touches <laughs> like um, you know the, the the flush integrated windows, the same with the automotive style tail lamps. Every, everything yeah. is um, surfaced and styled to an automotive pedigree. And it makes this look like nothing else on the road. It is a it is a very right unique shape and finish so what are we what are you going to be making this out of i see something here that tells me your prototype <laughs> is made at a yeah 
uh, made out of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, fiberglass. Composite, yeah, exactly. <coughs> it's a, it's a, this one is actually mostly carbon fiber. Uh, do you want to hear the story behind really? this? Yeah. This was, as we were first tuning the lift mechanism, oh. we allowed it to get cockeyed at one point. Not I, I take I take the blame for that. It was mostly my fault. And so we we overstressed it um, yeah. at, a, at a point. We'll, we'll fix it though. Yeah. I can even unless, tell you unless where. Learned. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, little wear points too. It's definitely, uh, we're getting both, you know, we're showing this off as a, as a, as a thing to, so people can be familiar with the product, but this is a true development tool as well. Yeah, so we're, we're yeah. getting a lot of development learnings from it, which we kind of have to, because, you know, uh, the RV industry is a big industry. It's about a $30 billion industry in the U S yeah, but it's yeah. not global automotive scale. And so we're not going to go and raise, you know, billions of dollars for this. And yet we want to do, um, and we are doing automotive style development with that level of rigor. And what that means is that we need to collapse some of the efforts so that a single asset, we get both development and marketing uh, yeah. purposes from. Yeah, and that, that's the right way to do it. <clears throat> some people uh, don't see it that way, but there's no question about it. This is, this is quite good. We're, so we're really proud. Still, are you still, <laughs> your, your takeaway here, are you still taking, um, uh, like, uh, I'm sure you're already taking pre-orders, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, Five hundred dollars refundable. Yeah. Yeah. And then, secondly, <clears throat> are you still looking for investors? Because uh, yeah, a lot I, of financial I, people watch what we do. Yeah, I think we're open to it. We, um, you know, we're, it's it's obviously vehicle production is a capital-intensive business, yeah, it is. and um, we we still have some money to raise to get into full volume production and yeah. uh yeah if there's if there are any any institutional investors who are really into what we're doing we we welcome a conversation hmm. you can just email me any idea what kind of uh what kind of funding you would need yeah it's it's not so this is not um it's not automotive scale so we're not going to you know we're not going to build a billion dollar plant it'll be it'll be tens of millions of dollars at least for for the first production facility um it's pro this is um the best we estimate it's a couple hundred million dollars to get yeah, sta there's stable where you in, yeah. Stable when you said tens of millions I was going to say something like you're out of your mind no no full, I'm glad you said uh, full capitalization yeah, couple, is a couple, couple hundred, hundred million. couple hundred million would be just about right yeah you get uh, you can get some pretty big tools yep. uh, that could make the uh, make those bits and this thing could really hum yeah I mean the of course, this goal for the, goal for the business is ultimately impact and scale. That's that's our right. our we, we you know we want to be remembered as one of if not the company that helped take RVing electric quickly and you know made made the pastime better for it. And um, I I think we, uh, we we know that this is this is this is a starting point and this this first product which is our our flagship. Um, we we are, have already designed it to to you know to be operationally cash flow positive. So we're gonna this is gonna be a, a positive gross margin yeah. business because yeah. we think that's the right way to do business. Yeah. Um, but this is also only the beginning. We're gonna we're gonna do successive products after this. The technology in the manufacturing system will get more mature. Mm. We'll build we'll build more volume into it. Yeah. And ultimately, we you know we want to make RVing more and more accessible to more people because it's yeah. our, it's already ten percent of the country. Believe it or not, that owns an RV. One really? in ten, one in ten American families. Oh, yeah. But. We think uh, we think it's it's a you know it's a great enough pastime that that's that's only the beginning. Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of talk about uh, your generation uh, not being all that interested in owning a car or a truck or yeah. anything else, but um, uh, I'm seeing things or I'm hearing things that this kind of a vehicle would be the reason why um, would be the reason why someone would go out and buy a Lightning yeah, for yeah. this these. The, the lightning in this it's a, uh, it's a key enabler you know? it is yeah to, because what i mean what do people do with trucks they do truck stuff like towing and yeah. it's you know what electric trucks are even the first ones that are that are coming out right now are so awesome but they yeah. do have this achilles heel around towing range right and, and we, that, we think and that this get, is and just gets rid of it yeah, i mean this really is the, this, truly, is the this is a great idea thanks we, uh, so um yeah anyway you're going to show us um Underneath, so oh, yeah, sure. uh, uh, take. Let's, let's see if we can get a peek under here. It's kind of tight, but how's uh, you feeling? Feeling limber? <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's just. Uh, Eric, you want to crawl under? <laughs> you go first? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, I'll. Let you get down there, Sandy. I'll. <laughs> oh, you got all your. You can got you see all a bit of it? Treasures under here. Oh yeah, exactly. That's where we stored all the stuff. <laughs> so yeah, look look back. I don't know, Eric. Do you want to? I'll get under after. You. All right. Good. 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 Yeah. So look look down the back. Do you see the drive unit there? Look, peer, peer backwards. Look yeah, at the, the, the aluminum casing. Yeah. Yep. 
so full, full custom air suspension, at least on this prototype. Um, so, you know, so you can do ride height adjustment. Again, you can see the, the drive unit in the rear. That's what propels the, the rear wheels. You can see the, the battery packs here, two, yeah. two 40 kilowatt hour battery packs that double up to 80 for, for full capacity. Um, it's, a, it's a true working prototype. Uh, the stability system you got here, um, what are you is looking this at? arc? Is this like any roll control here? Um, yeah, I'm that's that's, at, that's your damper. Yeah. Right. That, so that we didn't <clears throat> we didn't want to do a typical vertical strut um, because that yeah. would that would intrude up into the cabin. And right. So instead, you can see there's a rocker yeah. arm and then it goes horizontal. Okay. Yeah. Right. No problem there. Yeah. yeah. Close enough to the wheels that you're not you're not going to have a you know grounding out issue. Yeah. Yeah. Or bottoming out. Just... Bottoming out. The yeah. only thing I see that could be a problem would be the subframe. The, yeah, subframe for the motor mm -hmm. or what have you but yep. at the end of the day uh this is pretty pretty cool Thanks. what type of battery this looks like it's going to be 2170s here yep. yeah this is 2170 cell pack yeah um, who's who's giving you uh, the batteries <laughs> i don't know if i can divulge their name oh all, all right they, that's all right they... fine no, yeah. don't don't screw up your battery contract yeah um, that's the that's an important one yeah it's the big one yeah <clears throat> um, yeah. But but typical, you know, automotive grade 350 volt, um, yeah. 350 volt nominal system. Yeah. The, you know, a lot of what allows us to build this company now is um, the fact that the automotive supply chain has invested billions of dollars, or really tens and hundreds of billions of dollars over yeah. time to, yeah. to electrify. Yeah. Um, what it means is there's a there's a supply base of, of really high quality, costed down, right. durable EV components that we can draw on yeah. to, to build a vehicle like this. Well, and now um, those uh, those same guys are much more interested in um, um, startups. Startups. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, because they're seeing that the uh, the big the big boys, the OEMs, are starting to go more vertical integration. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we think we think it's the right way to build a great product. Um, nope. And of course, we're you know many of us are from Tesla. Uh, to, yeah. Toby and I, included, I, I was a battery engineer there for yeah. about five years, and. Um, Learned learned a few things about uh, what we, what we think is a good way to build a, build a great product. Well, it looks great. I'll tell you that for sure. Thanks, I Andy. really like the uh, the look of this. Most of the most everything I've seen works. I mean, it's uh, this is going to be a. I think you're going to have a winner. I know it. I I'm very good guesser. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I'm gonna. We have to shut it down because Eric's going like this, and that right. usually means like, shut up, up Sandy. Up. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Congratulations. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah. Thanks. And say hi to your uncle for me. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> we'll see ya. Take care. <laughs>